In this video, I test the blood pressure monitor of the Galaxy Watch 4. In total, I took 102 blood pressure measurements with both the Galaxy Watch 4 and a reference blood pressure monitor over 22 days. To summarize, the blood pressure measurements of the Galaxy Watch sort of work sometimes, but they have some very specific issues. As always, I do not want to waste your time, so timestamps are in the description below and also on the timeline. Hello everyone, for those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Rob and I'm a postdoctoral scientist specializing in biological data analysis. In this video, I'll test the blood pressure monitor built into the Galaxy Watch 4. I did this by taking blood pressure measurements in the morning after waking up and in the evening before going to bed using both the Galaxy Watch 4 and a reference blood pressure monitor. In an ideal world, the measurements of the Galaxy Watch and the dedicated blood pressure monitor would show a perfect match. Let's see if this is the case. Here I plotted the systolic blood pressure measurements according to my Omron blood pressure monitor on the horizontal axis and on the vertical axis my blood pressure at the same time using my Samsung Galaxy Watch 4. Each dot is a single matched set of measurements and the blue line is the best fitting line through these points. In total there are 102 dots in this plot and as you can see there is a correlation between the measurements of both devices, however this is far from perfect. If we make the same plot for my diastolic blood pressure, we get the following plot. Again, on the horizontal axis is the blood pressure according to the Omron blood pressure monitor, and on the vertical axis is my blood pressure according to the Galaxy Watch. For the diastolic blood pressure, we see no correlation, and the Galaxy Watch does not appear to perform well for this at all. So at first glance, this is not looking too great for the Galaxy Watch. However, I actually discovered something interesting when looking at the data in more detail, and all of that had to do with the calibration. When you set up the blood pressure monitor of the Galaxy Watch, you're asked to calibrate the device using a dedicated blood pressure monitor. You do this by measuring your blood pressure three times at the same time using the Galaxy Watch and the dedicated blood pressure monitor and you provide the app with the values of the dedicated monitor. However, over time you have to redo this calibration and I had to do this after a few weeks and here I noticed something interesting. And that is displayed here. On the horizontal axis we have the date I took the measurement and on the vertical axis is the difference in the systolic blood pressure between the Galaxy Watch and the reference device. Now a negative number means that the Galaxy Watch recorded a too low number and a positive number means the Galaxy Watch recorded a higher number. You can see a break in between the measurements and this was a moment after which I recalibrated the watch. As you can see before the calibration sometimes the watch recorded higher values than the blood pressure monitor and a bit more often it would record lower numbers. However after the recalibration the numbers of the Galaxy Watch were basically always lower than those according to the blood pressure monitor. And you can actually see a very similar pattern for the diastolic blood pressure displayed right here, where the values before the recalibration were sometimes higher and sometimes lower than the reference device, but afterwards they were more often lower than the reference device. The calibration effect might actually interfere with the analysis I did before, so let's now do a separate analysis for the two different periods. Let's start with the systolic blood pressure in the first period, where the values were sometimes higher and sometimes lower than the reference device, as is displayed here. Interestingly though, if we plot the correlations for this period, we see actually quite a poor correlation. So, even though the Galaxy Watch is not consistently lower than the reference device, as we saw for the second period, the correlation is actually quite weak. Next, let's move on to the second period, where the values of the Galaxy Watch were consistently too low, as is displayed here. We do see a stronger correlation between the Galaxy Watch and the reference device. It's just that the Galaxy Watch always tends to detect a too low value. Now, all the measurements should have been along this thin black line here if the agreement between both devices was perfect. However, as you can see, almost all measurements made by the Galaxy Watch were too low. If we now go back to that first period with a lower correlation, we do see that the values are more in the expected range, so some points are above the black line and some below. However, the correlation is much weaker. To close off, let's take a look at the diastolic blood pressure over these two periods. And as we saw before, also for the diastolic blood pressure, in the first period the Galaxy Watch sometimes detected a too high and sometimes a too low blood pressure, whereas in the second period it tended to be too low. For the first period of measurements, which is displayed here, we do see that the values are in the correct range. However, there is no correlation. Now this is the second period, and similar to the systolic blood pressure, the second period shows more correlation. However, the values tend to be too low. So what does this actually all mean? Well, I think this shows us how important the calibration but also the recalibration is for the blood pressure functionality of the Galaxy Watch. And you might not be able to compare the values from before and after recalibration. So is there actually any value in the blood pressure functionality of the Galaxy Watch? Well, for me as a relatively healthy individual with a more or less normal blood pressure, the systolic blood pressure measurements of the Galaxy Watch show some potential. However, the diastolic blood pressure measurements are basically random or at least close to random. So for me, 
personally, there's not much value in the blood pressure measurements of the Galaxy Watch. I think there's a very small niche of people that might benefit, and those are people who tend to have drastic drops and spikes in their blood pressure throughout the day. Otherwise, for most people, I'd recommend buying a dedicated blood pressure monitor. You need one anyway to keep calibrating the watch. Now, I also made a complete review of the Galaxy Watch 4, which I'll link above. If you want to see more videos like this, consider liking and subscribing. Of course, I already have a bunch of videos out there that you might be interested in. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful day.